Welcome to the Weather Insights Tropical Update. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. This is our briefing for Monday night, October 7, 2024, currently a little after 7 p.m. Central Time, National Hurricane Center just giving its uh, latest advisory on powerful Hurricane Milton. Of course, uh, just to go over briefly, the other systems we have in the Atlantic, we've got Leslie or okay, a tropical, um, yeah, <laughs> disturbance due at 20% uh, in the next seven days coming off the African coast. And then we have um, Hurricane Leslie that now has winds at 80 miles per hour. It's moving to the northwest at 14, expected to take that turn to the north and the northeast, much like Kirk did. Kirk's now off the map. And then we have this new disturbance, uh, disturbance one with a 20% chance of development um, heading in a northeast direction. Of course, all eyes and ears on Hurricane Milton, a Category 5 hurricane with winds at 180 miles per hour, minimum central pressure 905 millibars, still moving slow, expected to pick up forward speed and still expected to make landfall on Florida's western coast on Wednesday. And um, we were just, uh, Jeff and I were just looking at the infrared satellite showing a very small eye, which is indicative of that eye wall really tightening up, reaching its maximum sustained winds, a uh, very small eye there, just uh, like we always use the figure skater analogy, pulling the arms in. Well, the arms are all the way in. Can't pull those arms in anymore. Um, and even though this, this storm, you know, is expected to go, likely will go through some eye, eye wall replacement cycles and things like that, the winds are going to change, maybe go down a category or so. Jeff, it really doesn't change anything in terms of preparation, evacuations, this thing is a monster and it means business and folks in Florida need to be ready. And anybody listening to this podcast that has friends or family in Florida, um, please make sure that you, you help in getting this message out. Yeah. I mean, the recon's out there right now, the pressure is down to uh, eight, nine, nine millibars. So this is uh, actually eight, nine, seven uh, was yeah. the advisory at seven o'clock. So this is two millibars away from being Hurricane Rita in 2005. Uh, Hurricane Katrina was 902. So this is up there in rare air. Uh, I believe Hurricane Allen, poss possibly Allen, but definitely Hurricane Wilma. There's a strong, I think Wilma was 882 back in the Western Caribbean. So uh, there's not a lot of precedent for this in the Atlantic Basin, what we're facing here. And, you know, just to be clear, the very tiny vortex, and so we're talking the eyes about four miles across, and that's why you can get these immense wind speeds around that eye when it's so small like that. Uh, what's going to happen in the plane and the radar, there's radar here in the northwest coast of the Yucatan, is starting to potentially show um, an outer eye wall possibly starting to form. And this is probably the beginning of what we call an eye wall replacement cycle. So if you imagine the figure skater pulled in as, as tight as you can possibly get at this point, as small as you can be, spinning as fast as you can spin, you just can't keep that going forever. And so eventually that inner eyewall is going to collapse down and outer eyewall is going to form. The storm is going to weaken during that process. But the downside to that is you're going to expand the wind field. So while it's very small right now, you're going to expand those strong winds out over a bigger area. And that unfortunately brings the potential for much more impact as this gets up to the state of Florida. So it's not gonna come in as a category five, but if it comes in at a four, if it comes in at a three, it doesn't really matter. The damage is sort of already done here with this. Um, it's going to be pushing a lot of water. These massive waves that are being created out of the Gulf of Mexico are gonna arrive along the coast. The wind field expanding, just like what we saw with Helene, is gonna bring those strong winds really far inland in Florida. So across the entire state. So you can see in red here, the hurricane warnings, Tampa Bay, Sarasota, Port Charlotte, uh, Orlando, you are in a hurricane warning and hurricane watches for much of the Florida east, central and northeast coast. Now, Jacksonville, St. Augustine, Daytona, Cape Canaveral, almost down to the Melbourne area. So it's not just the West Coast. It's not just the Tampa Bay area thing. This is going to be nasty up here on the east and northeast coast of Florida, too, as it exits to the 
to the uh, northeast out into the Atlantic. And, you know, the symbol, the, the major hurricane symbol, smack dab right on top of Tampa Bay right now. This is, this is, would be right now on this track. And, and this track could still shift a little bit. We haven't seen a lot of shifting today, but it could still shift a little bit south. Hopefully it doesn't shift any further to the north. But this would likely be the worst hurricane in West Central Florida since 1921. Um, and this will be a record unprecedented storm surge uh, on the west coast of Florida. This is this is as bad as it gets. There's there's really no other words that, that we have catastrophic, unsurvivable. It's all there um, for these areas here, west central Florida. And, and we can get into some of those locations uh, in a minute. But this is kind of the wind. And I'm going to move over this kind of quick and, and, and kind of go to this other graphic by the Hurricane Center. That kind of gives you the whole picture. So you can see the cone here. Yeah. And we always tell people that, that, that there could be impacts outside the cone. And this is a great example of that. So Jacksonville, you're right on the edge. And you could get some winds as high as, you know, 74 to 110 miles an hour wow. up here in the Jacksonville area down the space coast of Florida. And then this purple area here is winds greater than 110 miles per hour. So <clears throat> this is where you're expecting significant damage. So Tampa Bay. Sarasota, Bradenton, and then inland towards Orlando, Lakeland. Um, there's a lot of population here. You know, we talked about Helene 10 days ago going into this area of Florida up here, the Big Bend. This is not a whole lot of population versus this area of Florida, which is millions upon millions of people. We're talking three to four million people when you add up uh, all of this area here. So the, the amount of damage, the amount of... Uh, damage that's going to be created here is much higher. The damage potential is much higher than it was for Helene up in the Big Bend area. And then, you know, like, like I keep stressing, regardless of what the wind speed is, regardless of what the category is, the water is coming. And these yeah. values are probably a little bit conservative, especially around Tampa Bay, especially right around where the eye comes in, the center comes in. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if you get 18 uh, feet of storm surge above ground level that's unsurvivable. We're talking well into the second stories. I just got back from Florida and Helene and doing the surveys over there and, and, and the structures are just gone. There, there was just, there's nothing. There's not even pilings in some of them left, not even concrete left in some of these. And that is what's coming here to the Western coast of Florida. Um, very dependent on the track. It, you know, the, the hurricane center track right now, right into Tampa Bay, that's a, just a horrible, horrendous surge event for the population areas around downtown Tampa, St. Petersburg. If it comes in a little south around Bradenton or Sarasota, your big surge numbers are going to be a little bit further south. Siesta Key down towards Charlotte Harbor, Punta Gorda, areas that were so hard hit with Hurricane Ian and Hurricane Charlie back in 2004 and 2022. But if this comes into that Tampa Bay area, uh, like the forecast is right now, it is, it is going to be absolutely just horrendous devastation uh, in that area. This this would be like driving a hurricane into Houston, Galveston, or New Orleans, or any major metropolitan area uh, that's low-lying. And so I, I cannot stress enough, if you're in an evacuation area, you're told to evacuate, you have got to get out. Yeah, and, and with Helene, if I remember right, Jeff, the um, um, surge forecast was six to eight feet with Helene. So we're, we're talking numbers almost twice that and in some cases and like you said those may be conservative numbers and I, I know you didn't make it as far south as Tampa but looking at some of the images coming from there from the Helene damage alone uh, I, I can only imagine uh, how bad it's going to be for them with uh, storm surge twice as high as that yeah just just to be clear for for Helene yeah. Most of the gauges in Tampa Bay were between six and seven feet. So okay. that's that's what we peaked out of, peaked out mm -hmm. at with Helene. Mm -hmm. We're easily uh, potential here to double that. So mm -hmm. if, if you have four feet of water in your house with Helene, you know, we're talking clear water down towards uh, Tampa, Metro Tampa in Tampa Bay. Um, you're talking potentially doubling the values you had with Helene. Um, and not only that, there Anna Marie Island, there's all of these places that have tons of debris, like we've all seen here after Harvey lined up on the streets, all of that debris is going to be moved around with the water and the wind and, and, and used as projectiles. I know Florida is doing everything they possibly can right now to pick up as much of that debris 
and get it to the debris sites as, as fast as they can. They have 24-7 operations with everything that's available to them to move that debris because that will become damaging to structures in this particular storm. And, and, and the fact of the matter is, is it's just, it's just not all going to get picked up. There's just no way yeah. it's all going to get done in the next two days. And, and unfortunately that, that is just going to add insult to injury, but I, I can't stress enough that a lot of these areas, just like we've seen with other big hurricanes, Michael, Ian, Laura, Katrina, Rita, a lot of these areas that this is going to come into is going to be unrecognizable when this is done. I mean, it is going to change the landscape. Barrier islands will be cut in half. They'll be breached. Uh, infrastructure will be completely destroyed. Structures, anything lower than 15 feet is virtually just going to be wiped away. Um, and this has not happened in this part of Florida uh, really since 1921. So we're talking this is a generational type hurricane event for this portion of Florida, it is, it is going to be very, very bad. And again, it doesn't matter what category this comes in at. It's not going to come in at 185 miles an hour, but whatever it comes in at, it's going to be lower. It doesn't matter. The water is coming and the water is what really kills. And, and that's what's coming very quickly. And I, and I, I can't stress enough, especially down here where the population is older around Charlotte Harbor, Port Charlotte, these areas we went to, after um, Ian, Bonita Beach, even Fort Myers, it's a lot of elderly population in this area that don't want to leave. They, they do not want to leave or they don't have the means to leave. And it's imperative that those folks get out of that area because uh, the storm surge is going to be extremely bad down, even in this area, well to the south. Again, with the storm moving like this, the onshore push is going to be south of the center. Okay, so if you're, if you're to the south of where the center makes landfall, that's where the maximum push of water is going to be. It's kind of opposite of what we normally think about. Uh, if, the, if you're north of the center, the wind's going to be offshore, blowing away from the coast, and so the storm surge will be lower. So it's, it's very important and dependent on where exactly that center comes in here over the next two days. And anywhere in this purple area, that could happen. Um, and, and it's it's just it's it's just going to be horrible yeah. know, on the west coast of Florida. A twenty or, or thirty mile difference in landfall can make quite a bit of difference uh, with this situation. Yeah, yeah, especially for Tampa Bay. Uh, you know, you're right. Yeah. You're right there on it right now. A, a little bit of a track shift to the south, um, and, and things would look a little bit better for Tampa Bay. Uh, a track shift to the north, and things would look even worse than they look now for Tampa Bay. Um, but you can't, you can't not make the preparations. You can't, you can't say, well, it's never hit Tampa. I've lived here. It's never happened. It's never happened. It's not going to happen. I've heard it all. I've heard everything. There, there's Indian burial, Indian burial grounds in Tampa. There's all this stuff. There's all this logic stuff about why people don't do and why hurricanes have hit there. This will hit. It will happen. Um, could it be a little bit further south? Yes, it could. Um, but somewhere in this area between Eau Claire water, just north of Tampa Bay, all the way down towards uh, Sarasota and those areas, somewhere in that area is going to take the brunt of this. And I promise you it is going to be absolutely horrible. Yeah. Well, here are the rainfall totals. And um, interesting how the uh, lower part of the Florida peninsula is getting less rain from this, even though that's on uh, what we Called the dirty side, the, the right side of the eye, and the heavier rainfall amounts to the north of that. Now, some of some of that's probably the the old front laying in here and the yeah. interaction of the hurricane with the trough and the, the bear clinic process that it's going to go through. And so this may be a situation we get the heavier rains up here on the north side of the, the system. Um, you know, there's there's certainly going to be a flood threat here, an inland flood threat. It's been wet in Florida. You haven't even really got to dry out since Helene made landfall. It's been raining off and on there. So there will be an inland flood threat. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. Again, it's going to be accelerating across the state. So I wouldn't imagine the number is going to be her horrific. Um, but, you know, 8 to 12 inches of rain is, is certainly possible in that I-4 corridor, Tampa, towards Orlando, and then over towards, you know, north of the Space Coast, up towards Daytona and and St. Augustine in those areas. And so um, I think the rainfall threat is, is, is certainly there. The flood threat is certainly there. I don't want to discount it, but it's that seawater threat. It's that storm surge threat, right. which is number one primary right now, second probably by the wind threat that comes in. And again, even if this weekends, 120, 130, 140 mile per hour sustained winds is nothing 
to 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 take lightly. You know, it will still do tremendous damage on the wind side of things. Um, so understand that we're gonna there's gonna be a lot of that in the next day and a half, two days of the storm is weakening. It will weaken, but that wind field is gonna expand. That expansion of the wind field, just like what we saw with Helene, broadens the impacts. More people are going to be hit. More people are going to be affected by the damage potential here. And again, this is going into a really highly populated area of the west central coast of Florida. You know, it's probably only second to to southeast Florida with my Miami Dade Fort Lauderdale area. Yeah, and we're talking about the west side, but then we've got uh, high areas of population for Orlando and Jacksonville on the other side. And going back to the um, tropical storm wind fields forecast, it's going to make a pretty quick track across the peninsula, about 12 hours um, to get across. So that is one reason that because it's moving so fast that those winds aren't going to weaken a lot and that Jacksonville could see hurricane force winds. Uh, Orlando could see hurricane force winds uh, because of the speed. The, the, the speed is good, I guess, for the rain part of it. But again, the rain is not the big thing here. I mean, a foot of rain is, yeah, that's nothing to mess around with. But Florida is kind of kind of used to that heavy rainfall. But nobody's used to 10, 15 foot storm surge and the wind. And um, yeah, that wind's going to impact the east side of, of the state as well. Yeah. And, and, and opposite, as the storm moves across, you get the counter, you know, it's counterclockwise. Yeah. So the worst of the conditions are south of the center here. As it moves, exits the Atlantic coast, the worst of the conditions will be north of the center. So Jacksonville, St. Augustine, down to Daytona, maybe even Cape Canaveral, this area here. This is where you're going to get the strongest winds, the onshore winds, the tidal rise over here. We're not anticipating a big tidal rise on the on the east coast of Florida, you know, three to five feet. Uh, most of this is dune protected, barrier island protected over here. So this is not significant. I mean, it's significant, but it's not it's not what you're going to see on the west coast. And you can kind of see that that difference here south of the center, big values down here. And as the center exits over here, north of the center, big values up this way. So understand where you are with the geography of Florida. The impacts are going to be different based on where you are in Florida and what side of the coast you're on or which side of the center you're on. And so this is um, this is going to be a big deal. And, and, and um, I can't stress enough that this will be similar to other big hurricanes that have hit the state, you know, Charlie, Ian, uh, the hurricanes back in 2004, uh, Gene, and some of the other ones, Ivan back in 2004. And so this is, this is going to be, uh, a horrible event for for the state of florida absolutely and uh, we'll have uh we'll have another update tomorrow on weather uh insights we'll keep it right here on the youtube channel um and make sure that you are subscribed and make sure you share this with friends and family and again going back to what i said to at the beginning if you have friends and family in florida make sure they're getting the message and uh you know anybody that is in mandatory evacuation need to really take that seriously and make sure, you know, mandatory means mandatory. It's not a suggestion. It means get out. Uh, there will not be any emergency personnel to help people in mandatory evacuation areas. And it's going to be bad. It's going to be life threatening. So uh, don't know, don't know how many ways we can say that Jeff <laughs> life threatening is life threatening. It's, it's pretty clear. So uh, again, we'll have another update tomorrow and also check out the blog too. the weather insights blog. We'll have that in the show notes as well. Jeff, thank you very much.